Okay, you guys, so this is problem number 45 from chapter 4 from the section on uh, mesh current methods, I believe. Yes, so this is from the section on mesh current methods. And in this problem, we have um, a 20 amp um, independent current source, and this is 5 ohms, 20, 4, 1, and a dependent voltage source, and that has value 6.5 I delta. So this current in this mesh controls the value of that voltage source. Okay, what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to use the mesh current method to find the total power developed in, the, in this circuit. Okay, I probably wouldn't use no voltage to be honest with you, but mesh works just fine. So let's get started. We have three meshes and so a mesh, the mesh method says, basically says that um, the sum of the meshes around a closed loop is equal to zero. The sum of the, sorry guys, I'm pretty tired. I've been doing videos all day and uh, one of them in particular from chapter 13 just really fried my brain. So the mesh current method says that the sum of the voltage drops around a closed loop is equal to zero. So let's get started. This mesh current here is just 20 amps. It's that guy right there. This mesh current here is I delta. And this mesh current right here is some I stacks that I don't know what it is. So, um, we already know what this is, so we don't need to write an, equa an equation there. Um, you can if you want, but um, as you guys know, if you guys watch any of my videos, I'm incredibly lazy. So I have two equations and two unknowns, so I'm just going to write the equations for those two meshes. So mesh at I delta, that's going to be 5 ohms, so times I delta minus 20. That's that net current, plus 1 ohm times I delta, plus, plus 4 times um, I delta minus Ix, and all that has to equal 0, according to KVL. Now we're going to group coefficients. So we've got I delta, I've got a 5 here, i got an I delta here, I 1. I delta here, and that gives me 4. That's all my I deltas. Now, my Ix's. Ix. So I got one Ix here with coefficient of negative 4. Constants go on the other side. I have a constant here. 5 times negative 20 is negative 100. It'll go on the other side as positive 100. Double check. So, let's see. I sub x has negative 4. I sub delta 5 plus 1 plus 4 equals 100. Yes. So that's that mesh equation. Now we have mesh at I sub x. That equation is going to be 20 ohms times I sub x minus 20 plus 4 times I sub x minus I sub delta plus 6.5 I delta. That's all got to equal zero. Okay, now I'm going to group coefficients. I delta, I got an I delta right here with negative 4. And I got another I delta here plus 6.5. Now, group my i sub x. I got a 20 i sub x here, uh, a 4 here, and that is it. Now, constants. 20 times negative 20 is negative 400. It'll go on the other side as positive 400. That is my second mesh equation. So let me double check i sub x. 20 and 4, i sub delta, negative 4, and 6.5. And as a triple check, because I'm horrible at making mistakes, I'm doing it right on paper and then typoing the 
board. So I'm going to start doing this because the last thing I want to do is confuse you guys further. So now I'm going to do 5 plus 1 plus 4, two equations, two unknowns, negative 4, and then 100. Negative 4 plus 6.5, 20 plus 4, and 400 solved. So this is telling me that I delta is 16 amps. Yes. So I delta is 16 amps, and I x is equal to 15 amps. And that is what I got before. Now, that wasn't the problem that we were solving. The problem we're solving is to find the total power developed by the circuit. So we're going to find the power dissipated by each of the circuit elements and make sure that power developed is equal to power absorbed. So I'm going to take the ones that are absorbing power first, which is resistors. Resistors always absorb power. So let's do P of 5. That's going to be P is I squared over R, right? So that's the R, and here's the I squared. The I squared is going to be the I delta 16 minus 20 quantity squared. When you do that, you should come up with 80 watts. P of 20, the power developed, absorbed by the 20 ohm resistor is 20 ohms times R squared. And the R is going to be the I sub X, which is 15 minus the 20 quantity squared. So when you do that, you should come up with 500 watts that that particular thing is absorbing on uh, circuit element. And then the P so 4, the power absorbed by the 4 ohm resistor is going to be 4. That's the R. The I squared is going to be I delta, which is 16, minus IX, which is 15, quantity squared. So that circuit element absorbs 4 watts worth of energy. And the, let's see, 1, 2, 3, what am I missing? The 1 ohm resistor. Power absorbed by the 1 ohm resistor is going to be 1 times I delta squared, which is 16 squared. That will absorb um, 256 watts of power. And then this here, is it absorbing or is it developing power? Well, we have 15 amps going in, and by the passive sign convention, Positive current flowing through a voltage de um, a voltage drop. So I'm going from positive to negative. I'm dropping in voltage. Is going to be a circuit element that absorbs power. So remember, positive current going through a voltage drop is a circuit element that absorbs power. So P of 6.5 um, I delta, the power absorbed by that circuit element, is going to be uh, P is equal to VI. So V is the 6. 0.5 times I delta, we know I, I delta is 16, and then the I sub X is a, um, I going through that, and that's going to be times 15 amps, and that will give you, that particular circuit element is absorbing 1,560 watts of power. Okay, now this circuit element. We're going to use KVL around this loop. We're actually going to use the mesh. Mesh says that this, this 20 amp independent current source has some voltage um, associated with it. So V 20 amp. So what is V 20 amp? Well V, the voltage drop across that 20 amp um, independent current source has got to be the sum of these two um, voltages. So we're just going to do V is equal to IR. So that's going to be that 5 ohm resistor times um, 20 amps minus I delta, which is 16, plus um, plus 20 times um, 20, 20, 20 amps minus I sub X, which is 15 amps. So I got voltage is equal to, so the, basically I did KVL, the sum of the voltages in that mesh must be equal to zero. And when you do that, you should come up with this value as 120 volts. So this 20 amp independent current source has a voltage um, of 120 volts.
So, it's an independent current source. So it's going to have, um, it's going to be absorb delivering power to the circuit. So when we do P is equal to VI, the V is the 120, and the I is negative um, 20 amps. So that's going to give you negative 2,400 watts. And as a final check, that tells you how much um, that independent current source is delivering, how much power it's delivering. It's delivering 2,400 watts. And so the sum of the absorbing needs to equal the sum of the um, delivering. So you go 80 plus 500 plus 4 plus 256 plus 1560, and it adds up to 2. Um, 2,400, so power absorbed equals power delivered, and case closed. Please share the video, tell your friends about the channel. More people means more participation. In fact, I'm starting to see more participation, so it's pretty cool. Thanks.